Spy Ninja. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Fragment. Two, Search and Destroy. Last time, we showed you how hard it can be to see these fast fragments shoot into the Salkis. Like Bruce Lee. Except, less painful. Because prevention won't always work, we have to know how to suspect these fragments post-operatively. We all know the classic symptoms, but today I'll show you how to suspect a peekaboo fragment. I'll also show you how to make some of our old ninja moves better. And I'll also show you how to seek and destroy an incarcerated fragment. This will all be done with case examples. Salkis Peekaboo. This man was referred four months after cataract surgery for persistent blurry vision due to inflammation and sectoral corneal edema. The red reflex shows the dome-shaped demarcation of his corneal edema. With no angle fragments, we treat for HSV endotheliitis. But two weeks, he's no better. We start plans for DMEC and see him back one more time in the clinic. Whoa! Where'd that come from? This freeze frame is actually from the OR, but where's the fragment? I promise it was here yesterday. Peekaboo, where are you hiding? First, we rinse. Nothing comes forward. No surprise. I'm sure it's hiding in the sulcus. Let's retropulse. Let's push harder. I promise you, this, this move works. These guys aren't going to believe me. Let's try single piece IA. That's what worked last time. It would seem that the higher flow rate of the single piece IA deepens and rinses the sulcus more so that the fragment can escape. Peekaboo fragments beat up the cornea, then they hide in the sulcus. We waited two months, but this edema required Demec to clear. Next case, search the sulcus. If you can't pulse a fragment free, you probably have to look directly at it with a scope. After being 2020 day one, Inflammation and sectoral edema build despite steroids. Vision drops, inferior corneal edema. You'd expect a fragment, but gonioscopy shows no fragments, huh? Would you believe at the next clinic appointment, <whistles> peekaboo. And again, by the time we get them to the OR, the peekaboo fragment returns to hiding. We rinse the angle, especially six o'clock, Nothing. We retropulse. Higher flow rate. Still nothing. It must be incarcerated in the sulcus. Watch, get the endoscope. Surprisingly, there's still no sign of it. Could this fragment have rinsed out earlier without us noticing? Hydrating the wounds. Whoa, it was in the angle. Maybe she slept on her left side last night, making it settle nasally instead of down at six o'clock like most anterior segment fragments do. But the take home point is, don't just assume that a rinse is enough to check the angle. If you have a fragment that is in the early stages of incarceration, it might be starting to stick somewhere else and it might not rinse out. You have to directly visualize the sulcus and the angle. Which brings us to our next case. Case three, incarceration. Deja vu. This patient was 2020 and routine early post-op. Then had prominent rebound inflammation at week six, which got better with steroid, but then we saw a one millimeter fragment in the inferior angle. On the first rinse attempt, we didn't directly visualize the fragment, so we just assumed we got it. But post-op, it was still there in the inferior angle with persistent inflammation, so this is take two. And clearly, rinsing is not enough. This fragment is incarcerated. With the endoscope, you can see the fragment right there. Maybe white blood cells would finish off a baby fragment like this within a week. 
Using an instrument is easier on gonioscopy because up is always up and down is always down. Here, the synechiae were much easier to break. It's hard to see this tiny fragment. I can take away its camouflage with this instrument behind it. So much inflammation from such a tiny hidden fragment. Imagine how long the inflammation could last if it was bigger. Put the aspiration port right on it so you don't lose it. The edema cleared and the patient regained 20-20 vision. Our last case, sleeper cell. So we'll always know if we have one of these peekaboo or incarcerated fragments because they always have intense rebound inflammation, right? Well, watch this case. Again, 2020, normal exam. And things remained the same two and a half years after surgery. And then, almost four years after surgery, the patient presented with inflammation and the inferior corneal edema shown here. After five days of antivirals and steroids, the pressure elevated, which maybe increased the corneal edema. Then suddenly, <whistles> a long delayed peekaboo? Going to the OR, this one hit again in the sulcus, but then rinsed out pretty easily. And we checked everywhere to make sure there were no more fragments in this eye. How did this free-floating fragment not cause inflammation for so long? It's not like Sommering's ring material, which is walled off from the rest of the eye by the anterior and posterior capsule. A mystery. Anyway, removing this late peekaboo allowed vision to improve from count fingers to 2020. So in summary, hidden fragments can cause rebound inflammation, typically a month or two after surgery, or years later. Elevated pressure is possible. Inferior corneal edema is possible with anterior chamber or peekaboo fragments. Rinse the angle to remove anterior fragments and retropulse the IOL with high flow rate to remove sulcus fragments. But this won't work for incarcerated fragments. You have to directly visualize the angle or sulcus with endoscope or gonioprism and perform synechiolysis. So watch out for these peekaboo fragments. Peek Whoa! <laughs> Leo, trying to upstage me, huh? Just so you know, the title of this video is Search and Destroy. Oh, sorry. Anyway, uh, just when you think you're in the clear. Peekaboo! Oh! That was a cheap shot. I'll get you, Leo. Bruce Lee.